Hi guys, it's me, April Lee, and my little Chewini, Zoe Claire, also known as Z-Bop. She is so cute. This is my cockapoo, Fluffy. This is Fluffy Claire and Z-Bop. These little creatures, I love them so much. I love dogs. I love all animals, but I love dogs. Um, anyway, we're relaxing this morning. I have these eye patches on. They feel so amazing. Um, if you're a lady out there and you have dark circles or tired eyes, as most of us do, that are dealing with these types of conditions, um, I feel so good with these. I think they're by Pixie. I'm not selling them or anything like that, but um, I don't know. We're going to see if I have as dark of a circle when we're done. Um, oops, sorry. I'm like eating part of the this stupid thing. Um, I'm freezing. So I live in sunny Florida and I'm not used to cold weather and I'm finding out that, um, I find out every year. I don't know why I forget this, but, um, I don't know if any of you guys have this problem with the cold. So I know some people with the conditions I have have an issue with the heat. Um, I, I'm like Goldilocks. I need it just right. I need like, I would say like 70, with sun and a little wind and no humidity would be like the perfect weather if I could have like a like a thermostat for my weather control that would be like ideal um, with zero pressure but I don't have that so in Florida it's like I don't even think it's 50 degrees right now and I've had an issue with my bones aching almost as if like I was telling my husband it feels like a toothache in your bones like everywhere and I have crazy weird extra weird symptoms. Um, I can't tell if it's from this weather or what, but I just wanted to give an update on some things. Um, some of my last videos, I had told you guys I discovered I had um, mast cell activation syndrome and how I found out I had it and all that. And um, I was really hoping that it was like the source of my problems and by treating it, it was going to cure me of all my ailments. Well, I mean, I'm going on at least four months of treatment. And while it did take care of the extreme flare of, I guess, mast cell activation syndrome, it helped a lot. And it's helping a lot of the symptoms. I'm still getting, I still have all my conditions. Um, and now the weather, because I notice I flare more when it's really hot or really cold. It's so hard to tell with what is going on, but all I know is that all my problems are on a high because the weather's making it worse. So I love to walk my dogs every day that I can. I try to do it Monday through Friday when I don't work if possible. And sometimes I make it, you know, the distance I try to go and sometimes we don't make it as far, but you know, I, I try my very best because it's good for them. It's good for me. But like right now, I refuse to walk in this weather um, unless it hits like at least 60 because I can't stand it. Like my ankles are killing me right now. My knees and my joints hurt. I have a uh, shooting pain and like my arm, it's weird and it's not from nerves. I can tell it's, I think it's just the cold. I don't know. It's really strange. Like I keep getting a random shooting pain going down like my arm bone on the left side at random and it just aches and throbs. There's, I don't know if there's anything you could even take for it. So I do Epsom salt baths when I can tolerate that. Um, any of you that have like pots or something, obviously like, I don't even know if you can take a bath at all, but my, um, I don't have pots, but I do have temp like a temperature issue. So if I get too hot, I mean, most of us will, like my blood pressure gets really high. I took a bath one day my blood pressure got so high that I had, my heart was racing and it caused me like, I was so sick. Like I had, it took me about an hour to get my heart rate down and my blood pressure down and to sit upright because my heart was racing. I was um, having like extreme dizziness and nausea and I just felt like, you feel like you're having like a panic attack, but it's just from the the temperature increasing so quickly. So I do like really hot, hot water in the bath of the Epsom salt because it's like the only thing that will calm down my muscles. Um, but at the same time, it does something with, I think it constricts blood vessels, it, whatever it does, I don't know. It does something. And so it can increase your heart rate. And then it also like my legs swell, which 
is so weird to take a hot bath and like my legs swell and they kind of throb and hurt a little bit. But at the same time, I have to do it to numb the pain of the muscles. So I just deal with it. But what I've been doing is, is just cooling the water down at the end and it's working to, I guess, like lower my temperature and my heart rate and everything. And then when I get out, then it's a lot better. But yeah, I did one so hot and I sat in it for so long that I couldn't do anything for an hour um, because it, it's like you ran a marathon or something and you can't get your heart rate down. So anyway, how stupid is that? But, um, I wanted to update you on something. So, um, and maybe this, this will help relate. So I went to, um, I had a new doctor's appointment because my rheumatologist literally like left without saying anything and disappeared. He was amazing. What a one, I mean, a wonderful guy. Um, he was engaged to be married and all this stuff. And you hear all these stories. I don't know what happened to this man. Like he just disappeared for like months and months and months and months. And a a fellow friend of his and doctor told me like, look for him online and you'll find him eventually. Well, I did, but he's like over an hour away. And I, for rheumatology that you need to see more than once a year, it's really hard for me to do that. And he was good, but, um, I thought, well, let me search and find somebody local to oversee my care. I've just been basically taking care of myself. And then every other doctor is like afraid to do anything besides basic treatment because they, if they don't specialize in fibromyalgia and chronic fatigue and all these problems, I don't really know what their issue is, but they don't want to, they don't want to oversee your care. They're like, you need a rheumatologist. So I said, okay. And I, I basically just started looking online for reviews. I find this place they have the most horrendous reviews online for the front desk, like bad. And I'm thinking, I can deal with that. Let me just see what they think of the doctor. Well, they rant and rave about how amazing this man is. So I thought, all right, let me get an appointment. Well, I make the appointment and I've had the appointment for like six months and I kept moving it. I'm like, oh, I'm fine. I don't need, you know, what's he going to do? What's he, how could he help me? Whatever. I mean, what seriously, what's he going to do for me? He's just going to oversee me, maybe write a prescription, move on with my day, you know? And so I kept pushing out, pushing out, pushing out. Finally, I'm like really bad, not doing as great. And I'm like, I really need to see this man. So finally get to the appointment. I am like sick to my stomach with nerves and thinking, oh my gosh, um, this front desk, they're going to be awful. What am I going to do with them? I don't want to deal with that. This doctor, I don't want to fight this man. You know, I know you guys know what I'm talking about when you're so exhausted from your conditions the last thing you have time for is to stink and like go in there tell him your whole life story in 10 minutes expect him to look at you and think you're not insane and <laughs> or over dramatic or whatever and then treat your current concerns I, I I was nervous so I just prayed about it I was like you know what Lord I need a doctor and I need care and maybe maybe a new set of eyes and ears will help me you know I don't know, maybe there's something missing. And I, you know, I know how that is. I mean, it's been 12 years since I've started the search of symptoms and issues. And I'm tired. Like the conditions I have, like everyone causes fatigue. Like I know you guys understand this. So the last thing I feel like doing is going in there and be like, let's look for more stuff. Oh my God. Like who has time for that? So I go into the appointment. The front desk is absolutely amazing. I had my hair done really cute. And the lady's like complimented my hair. She's so sweet. And just hand me the paperwork. Super kind. Whatever. The wait was a little long. Like 35 minutes or so. Um, but the it's worth it. Because if you're waiting for a good doctor. It's not that they don't respect your time. It's that they. Usually when you get in the room. It's because they take so much time with you. Because they actually care. And want to try. So that was the case. So I'm in the waiting room. What I loved about this place, it had super high ceilings, like you're in like the hospital or something. So because of that, I have so many issues with lights and sounds and scents and smells and all that junk. Um, Someone came in smelling like cigarette smoke. Someone came in with like a ton of cologne on, but where they sat, like the whiff of that stuff finally like went away and I didn't have to get up and be rude because I look so incredibly rude. I can't sit next to people like that. And sometimes people come in, they smell like a, chimney or like a cigarette ashtray or something and if you smoke I mean it's nothing against you it's just that I can't it makes me so sick I can't stand it so that was amazing it's huge like a huge waiting area and I was just really impressed with how professional and kind they were so go to the back and I'm talking 
to the medical assistant and she's just like really, you know, real talking about her own health. We're chatting away, whatever. So that was good. T- spoke highly of the doctor, meet the doctor. He's in there training, like, I guess like a new assistant resident or whatever you want to call it is going to be working there. They were so compassionate. Like, I can't even tell you like, so, um, the, he's like teaching the guy the the ropes, you know, of the place, not how to be a doctor, but just going over the stuff. And then the guy, the new guy is looking at me like, wow, like that's a lot <laughs> to deal with. Look at, I mean, not like I'm crazy. Like, wow, you're just full of crap, but like, wow, that's a lot of history. That's a lot of problems here. You know, he's like, I'm so sorry. And so we're talking a little bit and the doctor is like amazing. So he's like, all right, just, so just talk to me. So I'm like, let me sum it up quickly. What, you know, basically the past five years, not my whole life story. So he's, he just stood there And you know someone's a good listener when they're speaking to you and asking a question. And when you're talking, they're they're looking at you, but they're also like, as a doctor, they're thinking and they're like, okay, they're it's almost like he's, you know, in his mind taking these categories, like checking the boxes off of yes and no and whatever. So as I'm speaking, he's talking to the guy. He's like, all right, um, put this in like for testing he's like test this test that test this test that and he's talking he's like all right so tell me more about this show me your pictures so I brought pictures it's so important guys if you have something to show please bring it because besides looking tired and 40 years old I don't look sick um otherwise why the heck would I be laying here like this (laughs) I had I slept but I feel like I didn't sleep at all that's a whole other thing so within this appointment he kept you know saying stuff he's asking me questions and confirming certain things like yes with fibro this happens and with mast cell this happens and he was talking about with me with my long COVID that I had and like really thinking so he's like what we're gonna do he's like I told him I went in there I was like look I'm not expecting a miracle I said I'm just expecting um I would like a doctor to believe me to work with me and partner with me and basically just oversee my care that I don't get any worse and that you can help me maintain my care you know and along the way if you see something that could be tested for, you think there's something underlying, let's test it. And he he was totally in agreement. He was like, I see that you've been tested for lupus. You have a, you know, a lot of crazy symptoms. Let's make sure there's no underlying autoimmune that we're missing. He's like, sometimes when you test, if you're not in the flare, it will not detect things. So no doctor. I mean, I've seen, I can't even tell you between ERs and in like hundreds hundreds of doctors between ERs and like little like urgent cares and like practices and specialists and hospitals and Mayo Clinic, all that. And no one has ever said, oh, hello, by the way, when, and this is what he told me, he's like, when you have your symptoms at the worst, please go right away and get your blood tested. Well, I flare it up because I flare up every day lately, more and more and more with low grade fevers I've had this off and on but it's now it's like for the past two years ever since I got long COVID something happened in my body that I run low grade fevers and I get that butterfly rash which they believe is from mass cell activation but also could be from underlying lupus so if you have lupus you need to treat lupus I really don't want lupus I would like to treat something so I could feel better because even treating the mast cell activation, yes, it's helping, but I'm having um, a lot of foot pain and joint pain, ankle pain, wrist pain and knee pain and hand pain that I've never really had like this and in this pattern. And it's been getting increasingly worse with the low grade fevers, with this rash on my face that I get every single day and the rash is hot and it mimics lupus doesn't mean it is it could be the mast cell and it's just not in control whatever but um he noticed it and i didn't say a word about any of that so he noticed it and he's doing testing that i have never even had done because i'm like i never heard of these there's extra ones so he's testing for all types of inflammatory autoimmune all kinds of things that i've had tested before but in more detail with added things that are more detailed along with things i've never heard of which says a lot because i went to mayo clinic you think that they would test for everything in the world and of course they they don't they kind of test for everything within your realm of symptoms and a little outside that but not they just can't test you for everything t- testable because 
they can't justify that. So because of all the symptoms, because of the photos I have, because I wasn't as red then, he looked, he's like, oh, you know, he could see them on the photos. So I was able to show the pattern and he's having me track my temperatures right now. He wanted me to test during a, a flare of the fever and redness, which I did. And I actually had forgot about it, but I was talking to a friend. Um, we communicate back and forth on our health stuff. And I was like, oh, wait, I'm supposed to go and my blood work. And I happened to be off that day and I just got my kids from school. So I drove down really quick, quick and they did the labs. And I'm telling you, they took like nine vials of blood and like tons of testing, the metabolic panel, all the extra stuff. Um, vitamin D, not only is he testing vitamin D, but apparently he's testing like, I guess like how it... Um, whatever it processes in the liver a certain way. And if it doesn't um, do that, that because I'm deficient in vitamin D. I live in Florida. I go in the sun. I take vitamin D. I've even taken prescription vitamin D. And I don't absorb it that well. It's always pretty low. So um, anyway, I don't know. This doctor is very thorough. So I, what I want to say here is if you've been sick for a long time, you're like, oh, what's the point? I'm so tired. I really don't want to go. Like sometimes, and I'm sure you've ran into this, you go and like you actually get more out of the appointment than you thought. And it's actually turned out to be for your own good. So definitely like what I'm learning is keep your appointments. If you make an appointment, just go because I addressed more things than I thought was going to happen. I didn't have to fight with him. He took me seriously. Now I have another great doctor to oversee my care for my condition. He doesn't think I'm insane. And I didn't, I don't have the energy to fight. I just don't. It's mentally so stressful when you go to a doctor, as you all know, and you have to explain yourself and they look at you like, um, <laughs> you're insane. I, I just don't have time for that. Now I'm having more problems sleeping. Obviously we all know this happens. So when you sleep, or well, when I sleep, when I wake up, it's like I never slept at all. So I take melatonin to fall asleep, which does help me. And then I wake up a lot. Like I'll wake up and I don't wake up and watch TV or like write a song or dance. I just wake up enough that I see my blinds or I roll over. I see my husband. Like I'm aware and I'm awake, but like I'm not, can't do anything. I just fall right back asleep. But it, it happens all night long. So I wake up in the morning. I have to get my kids to school. I get up at like six o'clock or 6.15, and I, I set like nine alarms, and I slowly wake up. I finally get up. I'm walking around waking them up, and I am like, it takes me literally, and of, by the time I'm like drive back from school, I'm awake. Like, it's ridiculous, and so I'm not moody or nasty or anything, but I do have to like, get up. Come on, you get up, and no, you get up, and it was like, it's so exhausting, um, I got two kids, one's a teenager, one's a preteen, and it is like, it's not fun in the morning trying to get them out of bed. But anyway, I do that, and I wake myself up and whatever. But right now, where I live, it's 9 o'clock in the morning. I worked Saturday and Sunday. I made it to church. <sighs> I'm tired. Um, I got stuff to do, but I wanted to hop on, and like I'm like, what better time to kind of just talk to people about what's going on? So... What I want to know is if you're watching this video, if you could put a comment like how you got to my channel, like a Google search or a video suggestion or whatever, how you got to my channel and like what you deal with and why you're here. I don't, I mean, you don't have to give me like gory details of your life or pour your heart out, but I would love to know. And then um, just like, like the video, if you see it and you feel like you're getting something out of stuff, like it and um, subscribe if you're new because I don't understand how YouTube works. All I know is that if you like and subscribe the person's channel, they will send it to more people to see it or something like that. So that would be so helpful because um, I'm not all, all about being like, a you know, having a million people on my channel or anything, but it would be nice to grow it um, and reach more people. And also it helps me because sometimes you guys make a comment that's helpful or the interaction or a suggestion or something. Um, if you're new here and you're here to like tell me yoga or lettuce or brain training is going to fix my problems, I don't want to be rude and I'm not being rude, but I've done everything in the world. If you watched my channel, I'm tired. So I'm not going to do any of that because I've already done it all. And I'm just here to share my story and relate to you. And also, I am not here to be like Miss 
like tell you what to do. I know everything. When I tell you something like, oh, I've done this and that, or I know this and know that, it's not because I feel like I'm an expert in that thing. I just want to share everything I've learned and know because if you haven't done or tried it, like you might want to do it or it'll help somebody that's new to being sick. I'm not here to say I got all the answers because I don't. I have some answers for me that may work for you, like low dose naltrexone. If they quit making that medicine, this bed it would be like, this would be my life. I would not ever get out of this bed. That medicine for me completely transformed my health. I'm still sick. I'm still really sick. I'm. <laughs> I still deal with like a lot of flares, and I. It's hard, but I couldn't do anything. Like I couldn't do anything. Uh, I couldn't, there's no way I could even work the 10 hours of work I do. I couldn't cook at all. I could not do anything for my family. My life was insanely unpredictable. It still is. But with it, it's like, I need it. It's like going without water. You need water. I need LDN. It, for whatever reason, that medication is like, the number one thing that has helped me so much. It doesn't help everyone. It helps a lot, a lot of people. But when I talk about that, that is not because I'm telling you like it's going to cure you or it's the only thing because it's not. But for me, it's amazing. And I had to share it because what led me to it was some guy sharing his story with it. Um, Some people who do the brain training or what up, rewiring and all this kind of stuff, that worked for them. Um, That it's not going to work for me because my conditions, I don't even know where they all came from, but I've been dealing with illness since I was small. And I I have autoimmune conditions that most likely like open me up for all this. And it's not because of my leaky gut or my microbiome or any of that, because I also did that for two solid years. In addition to years before that, my gut like is just, it sucks. My gut sucks. Totally freaking sucks. Um, I do all of it. I've the probiotics, I've tried every kind there is. I'm on a new one now because with mass cell activation, you're allergic to some of them and I'm finding that out. So I've done all that, rebuilding the gut lining, all the everything. I just, I've done it all. And so right now I know the the key is like the gut is so important. So I do my very best, but there's nothing like you can't fully get like a perfect gut. I'm 44 years old. Like my gut is my gut. And I've treated it really well. I do everything. I don't have ulcers. I don't have holes and gaps and all that kind of stuff. I treat a leaky gut. I mean, I worked with a top functional medicine doctor in the U.S., amazing doctor, incredible doctor, done all that. And it got me, I I learned a lot and I've done a lot and it helped tremendously, trust me. But I have other gut conditions that whether you have a leaky gut or uh, whatever, doesn't matter what you do, the condition's still there. So it's a lot better and it's controlled, but it still flares because every condition I have personally, it it's not caused by the gut. It affects the gut, unfortunately. So anyway, if you guys are out there and you get frustrated from all these suggestions, I'm, I'm, I'm there with you. Trust me. So anyway, um, oh, another thing, because of the extreme exhaustion. I did talk to my doctor, which is my, um, my, um, neurologist because neurology, my neurologist does sleep studies and stuff. I'm like, can we get my sleep better? Like whatever we can do. Cause I need, I need to feel like I, when I sleep, like I actually slept. Cause it's like a waste of my time if I don't feel like I slept. So, um, I spoke with him. He's so sweet. He called me over the phone, amazing, compassionate doctor to even give a rat's butt, even call me, he called me on the phone. He's like, Hey, it's your doctor. I'm like, great. So he's talking to me and asking me all these questions. And even though I may not have most likely 99.9% don't have sleep apnea, he's doing a home study for me. And by doing the home study, I think it can other, see other things because it sees your breathing and your sleep pattern, and all that. And at least make sure that he doesn't just throw a pill at me, you know, and maybe there's something I could do to actually get better sleep. Cause every condition I have disturbs your sleep. It's terrible. And you all know that. So anyway, um, yeah, that's where I'm at. I am so tired. So I worked on I, the whole week I recovered. Cause I told you last week when I had worked, it brought on vertigo and I was super weak and sick with 
endless symptoms for five days. Finally, at the fifth day, I felt better, like a you know, like a normal illness person. And then um, I went to work, and I was like, oh, I'm okay. And I went took my daughter to a birthday party, and then the next day, uh, obviously that night I didn't feel like great. The next day, I which was yesterday, I really pushed through like to get to church, and I actually made it there. I was so glad I did. I'm really hurting today. Um, I was so glad I did that. I was really happy to be there. This sweet, sweet, sweet woman. Oh my gosh, she's so sweet. She recovered from, um, she's actually in remission of cancer, I think of breast cancer, and she is just so sweet. And they did, um, they were praying for each other for healing and stuff. And she came over to me and just wrapped her arms around me and was praying for my healing and telling me your husband is praying every night for accelerated healing for me. And it just brought me so much peace. It was so good. I was there. I was so grateful to God. And even during the worship, like I could have cried because I was just so happy that I made it because I, the week before it, all the will in the world, I couldn't have been there. I had vertigo and I was so weak and just not feeling good. And I was just so happy and so grateful to be able to stand there and just, and sit there, at least be there. And, um, it was good. So it really was good for me yesterday. Today, I'm super tired. My knees and like I said, all my hands and my feet and my ankles and joints, they're killing me. Um, but they keep, it's like a dull ache and they keep coming in this waves of like a, like a, like a throb, like a, like a toothache. If you ever had a toothache or an abscess or something and suddenly like it comes, you know, that pain. And so it's like, it's painful. And I don't even know what you would take for that. So I'm on low dose naltrexone, which is for pain and inflammation. I'm on amitriptyline, just very low dose for nerve pain. I don't even know what else I would do. So I have, um, compression stock, like socks on that go from the knee below the knee to the half of your foot. So it's really kind of compressing my ankles, helping a little bit. And I have like warm stuff on, but this cold is like killing me. Um, there's no way. I'm so sorry if you live in like snow. As gorgeous as it is, I would be a, a wreck. Um, so I'm super tired. I'm gonna, I'm making a decision when I'm done this video is I'm gonna lay here and I'm going to put the Bible app on and listen to the Bible. I'm gonna pray, spend some time with God and force myself <laughs> to get up in this cold, wrap myself up and do what needs to be done first. Like it has to be done, which is just two errands. It's not hard. And then if I could, um, clean and not feel like I'm wearing myself out, I'm going to do a few things. Just my house is decent today. So I have to work tomorrow. Um, so yeah, I gotta, I, I try my best to like pace the pacing method, you know? And so that's why I'm like, today I can tell. So I got up and like, you know, when you get up and you're like, you push yourself to get up and then you're like, okay, you're not great, but like, you're okay. And you're, oh, I'm, I'm doing more than I thought I could today. Every time I get up, my body's like, lay down, lay down, lay down, lay down, lay down. So that's why I'm doing this. So I thought what better time to just kind of chat and give you an update. So, um, anyway, I'll get my labs back in about, hopefully two weeks and I see the doctor in about six if they're positive trust me I'll be seeing him sooner than that um I don't know what to expect I I don't know I the all I know is that I the conditions that I've had ever since I I got over COVID um I don't know well I'm, I'm either accumulating more illnesses or they're well, for sure the mast cell activation, I never had that before because I thought maybe I had it all my life. No way. It's new. So, but I don't know if all the other accumulating symptoms is just underlying autoimmune that is just not traceable yet, or I'm, I'm developing conditions. Obviously in my head, I'm like, please just let it be stuff that's already been in there floating around. And they're just going to discover it and just treat me. So I feel better rather than now I'm progressing. Like, I don't want that. I want to be better. Honestly, like I want to be healed. I, and I was praying in church. I was like, Lord, like, you know, I don't know your plan for me. Like my whole goal in life is to be an inspiration to others that God is real and that 
that he is still um, working today, like through people, um, and he's still bringing hope, and and he and he loves you, and that is like my ultimate thing. So I was thinking, like, man, like, could just if all these people one day could see me, per you know, totally healed, like, and I totally recovered, and I could tell them, like, you know, the power of your um, of what you can do. Obviously, God can do anything He wants, and so. I pray every day and I'm going to pray until I take my last breath that I'm healed and I'm better. Um, but at the same time, like God is God. Like I love God. I mean, I have a healthy fear of the Lord because I should have a healthy fear of the Lord, but I love God. Like I love him so much, whether he heals me or not. Like he's got a plan. Like I was not promised a perfect body, a perfect mind, a perfect life, a perfect health, whatever. And the crazy thing is when I was like living in sin and I was at my worst and I would pray, the Lord answered some of these extreme prayers, which literally showed me how real he is and how much like grace and love and compassion he has, even when I'm sinning against him. And when I became saved and especially how I feel now, um, I know how much he loves me. And if I was living in sin and totally against him and he's answering prayers, how faithful would he be to answer my prayers now? Like in his timing and in his way, like there's a purpose and a plan for my life. And unfortunately for me and some of you guys, like it's just involving like what is on earth, like illness and sorrow and sadness and all that. And trust me, like I am so grateful I pray every day and I'm so grateful to God that my family is healthy and my family is alive and I have my children and, you know, I'm so grateful and I pray all the time, Lord, please, God, just, if anything, I'll deal with all these things. Nothing would compare to like anything happening to my family. I, that is my, uh, I don't want anything to happen to my family. So I look at my life like I have a great life to be dealing with. And another thing too, I know it's getting long, but when I was in church, my pastor made a comment. He was just kind of being silly, but serious. And he was like, I don't suffer well. He's like, ask my wife if I have the flu, like I'm just the biggest baby and I just don't like it. And I don't suffer well. And my husband looked at me and he wasn't joking. He looked at me, he's like, you're good at suffering. And I, I almost laughed. I was like, I guess I have gotten good at suffering, used to it and whatever. Like, um, it's weird because they made me realize like, I don't want to be, that's not like a talent I want to have. I don't want to be like, oh, you're so talented at suffering. Like, I don't want that to be my talent. But I tell you what, like, um, for me personally, um, the Lord gives me so much strength. It's, it's like, trust me on these days. And I show you these days where like, like I, and I'm so glad. And this is such a good lesson to learn when you're at your lowest, there's always an up. There's always an up from there. If you guys are having a bad day and like literally at the edge and you feel like you can't even live like this anymore, there's always an up. There's always a good day and a good time. And trust me, because every few months I lose it. I'm like, I can't do this anymore. I can't think like, I'm a, I, I feel like I'm going to totally crack in every way. And then I just sit with God and sometimes I'm so tired. I'm like, Laura, I can't, I can't even say a word. I'm like, here I am. I'm here. Just love on me. Speak to me. Something, God, just help me. And I get out of it. Usually lasts like a day or two. And then I'm strong again. And um, I don't like that that's how it is. But I have to like, you know, I look at this like I live the life I have. Um, You know, I try to be as healthy as I can within being unhealthy and I try to be as positive as I can in a negative situation. And that's how I'm coping. Um, having this channel has um, it definitely, like, I need it. It's a way for me to, like, have an outlet. I feel like if I could just make anyone feel better or, like, they're not freaking bonkers with invisible stuff. I mean, you think you're insane. So if anybody, I mean, anything, it just, it helps me so much. So please like my channel, please share it, please subscribe.
chime in in the comments. Please don't be mean or cruel. No, nobody has. I mean, I'm so grateful. And it's such a blessing that I do, um, on some of the things that I have, I do like weed out comments, but no, I've had like two nasty things in two years. So that says a lot. So, um, I'm very grateful for your kindness to me. Um, if you're on here and another thing too, like if you don't believe in God or you get to a point where you're on here and like, you don't know what to do, but you want to know God and like, you want to be, you know, so what they call saved and you want to take Jesus as your savior, please comment in here or something. I will pray with you. Salvation prayer, whatever it is, like, trust me guys, like there's no judgment if you don't ever want God, but I tell you what, I can't do it without God. I cannot live like this. And it's not because, you know, even if I could live without him, like, why would I want to do that? When I die, I'm going to, I'm going to know, you know, I'll be in heaven with my savior and with God and I'm going to know them and they're going to know me because we have a relationship. It's, it, it's so weird to me. Like I always do this like analogy, like, I mean, obviously you can't even go to heaven if you, you haven't given your life to Jesus anyway and like accepted that. But I'm just saying like some people do that and then they never speak to God again. So let's say you go to heaven, uh, not heaven. Let's just say you go to like, now you're going to go at the end of your life or the, whatever. Someone says, you got to go live in this apartment with this stranger for the rest of your life. That would be really awkward. I know this sounds so stupid, but like, I want to know my savior. I want to know like my God. You know what I mean? Like when I get to heaven and be like, oh my gosh, you know, it's like, I know you, we know each other. I mean, that's amazing. So I'm not crazy guys. If any of you are atheists or don't believe in God, like I'm not crazy. I'm just crazy in love with Jesus and God. And like, I, I'm, I just love, I love the Lord. I am so grateful that, um, I have that relationship and I even have that knowledge. I'm so grateful. So Anyway, I hope you guys are doing well. If any of you want me to do a video on anything specific, let me know. Um, I have some videos coming up when I feel better and more alive. Um, I'm going to give like, I'm going to do some videos on like how to's and the involving like all kinds of stuff. And if it's something like, obviously you already know, share it with a friend or something like share it with somebody. Um, because you know, I don't do this to hear myself talk. I do this because I really want to make a difference in this community. And I'm so grateful that I'm not alone because this is so isolating. Like I'm home a lot. If I didn't work, like I work very part-time and it is literally killing me, but, um, physically, but, um, I would never go anywhere except like to drop my kids off to school, pick them up and go to, buy food. I don't even buy food. Sometimes I go to most of the time I do order pickup because I can't make it around a store without like having a breast or whatever. And it's hard for me. So I go to a little store called Aldi because I can get in and out of that place quickly. It's very small. Um, and I try to do it like once a week. I don't go every day. I can't do it. So Anyway, um, I'm so grateful for any of you and all of you that are on my channel and listen to me and support me. I'm so grateful. And I hope that um, we just all feel like a little less alone with each other. So God bless you all and have a great day. Bye.